Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Glory and honor, dominion and power be to God forever and ever. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let us sing our resurrection praise. Christ the Lord is risen today.
and as, and as a people of faith, may we share together in the opening prayer. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate our Lord's resurrection by the renewing of your spirit may arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together may we share in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into seated. Our first scripture lesson this day comes from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter. Please hear these words. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and its thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, which is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus our Lord, in order that in the coming age he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us through Christ Jesus our Lord. For it's by grace you have been saved by faith, and this is not from yourself, but it's a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would our ushers come forward for the morning offering?
I have to tell you folks, this choir has sung, this is the third service, and each time I thought, that's the best I've ever heard, until that time, man, the Holy Spirit gave y'all something extra, I was, mm, thank you, praise God for that, hear the gospel according to the 16th chapter of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. All over the world this morning, as the sunlight broke through the darkness, Christians joined together in the ancient Easter greeting. Christ is risen. Christ Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, your love has defeated the grave. Your Son has defeated sin and death. Help us to hear anew this morning the story of resurrection power. Help us to believe and help us to be made new. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you have ever felt stuck 
in a rut. <laughs> Stuck in a rut. The same old thing. Day in and day out. Same attitudes, same actions, a rut. Can feel like chains or bondage. You just can't get past it or out of it. Maybe that rut is about yourself. You have some bad habits that you can't seem to break. We have some thoughts that we can't seem to control. Or maybe there's some despair that you just can't seem to overcome. Or maybe that rut is about some relationship. Perhaps a wrong committed or experienced that seems to have damaged a relationship beyond repair. Perhaps the very relationship itself just seems to be broken. Or maybe it's the absence of a relationship that carries a hopelessness in your spirit. Maybe that rut is as big as the whole world. There's violence everywhere. People are mistreated in every nation under the sun. Man's inhumanity to man. There's homelessness and starvation. And even the creation itself with tornadoes and tsunamis seems broken. Maybe the rut is about your faith. Maybe the rut is that you're caught in the rut of pride where you think you're too smart for all this believing stuff. Maybe the rut is that you're so smart about this believing stuff that you've forgotten that it's about a relationship. Maybe this rut is some doubt and despair that keeps you from believing. Ruts can make you feel jaded. Everything can seem old and dull. Ruts can make you despair. Ruts can make you hopeless. Ruts can make you shut down and stop living. Ruts. Think about it this way. A rut is just an elongated grave. But the good news of Easter is it's time to get out of your rut. The grave is defeated. Christ is risen. All things have been made new. The gospel record from Mark reminds us of that early morning when the Mary, two Marys and Salome went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. That large stone that was sure to be blocking their way was already rolled back and, and they entered the tomb, but rather than a corpse, an angel declared to them, you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. He is risen. Easter. Easter's not just a celebration of a historical or a historic event. Now, history does attest that Jesus was killed, crucified on Golgotha. There is evidence that overwhelms any attempt to prove otherwise. And also that he was dead. He died a, a corpse for three days. But yet then when he rose, he appeared not just to the Marys and the disciples, but over 500 others individually witnessed that same Jesus walking around alive. Even non-Christian sources acknowledge such. Now, how it happened is not something that rational scientific minds will ever be able to understand or replicate to either prove or disprove. But it is our faith. Jesus was dead. But Jesus is now alive. And the Easter story doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's part of a long, long story that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, who were the first two to fall into a rut when they decided to try to live apart from God's order and direction. And then over the centuries, the Bible tells us the stories of, of how God's people would try to escape the rut pushing and struggling to lift themselves up and out of the darkness and into the light. 
And, and over the years, there were even times when God's people were stirred to hear the prophets and to turn back to God. But the tendency was always to slide right back down into the old way. And sometimes it even seemed that the only way to cope with living in the rut was just to accommodate it, to get used to it, to even start calling it normal or inevitable. Isn't that our story too? We, like all humanity, can find ourselves in bondage to sin and death, and it can seem for us an inescapable rut. We know that we have thoughts and behaviors that are self-destructive and injurious to others, and all of that leads to death. But the good news of Easter is that our God sent His Son to show us love and to offer us grace, that this Son, Jesus, died on the cross and rose again so that we could be released from both the penalty of sin and the power of sin. We could be released from the bondage and given new life. Jesus, with His life, death, and resurrection, declared... Behold, I am making all things new. For centuries, the southernmost point of Africa experienced such tremendous storms that no one ever knew what existed beyond that cape, for no ship attempting to round that point ever returned to tell the tale. Among the ancients, it was known as the Cape of Storms, but then a Portuguese explorer in the 16th century, Vasco da Gama, successfully sailed around that very point, and he found beyond the wild raging storms a great calm sea, and beyond that the very shores of India. And the name of that cape was changed from the Cape of Storms to the Cape of Good Hope. Death is like that Cape of Storms on which all hopes of life beyond had been wrecked. No one knew what lay beyond that point until on Easter morning, Jesus stepped through death and secured our victory over that last great enemy. Suddenly, like those ancient explorers, we now can see beyond the storm into the hope of a new and eternal life with God. There have been several times in my life, and I'm sure yours, where I knew exactly where I was when something happened. This Monday was such a day. The great cathedral of Paris, Notre Dame, burning. And many all around the world paused to watch as the TV caught the smoke billowing and the flames. And the great roof and that incredible spire came crashing down. And it seemed as if the centuries of that great edifice were over, were gone, were dead. And then the pictures started coming out. The ones that had been published that show amidst the ruins. The cross still shining brightly over the ashes. You see, Jesus in the power of the resurrection says, I'm making all things new. The Eastern Orthodox Church, our brothers and sisters there, they paint an incredible picture of the resurrection victory, so much bolder than things we sometimes write. And, and, and they have this picture where Jesus, the crucified one, is standing on the broken doors of hell. And the massive portals lie crossed beneath his feet like the cross that won this triumph. And Jesus stands on those doors, braced and striding, kind of like a superhero, using his mighty outstretched arms to lift up a great weight. And that weight is Adam and Eve, our forebears, father and mother in the fallen flesh. And Jesus grasps Adam's wrist with his right hand and 
eaves with his left, and he pulls them forcibly up out of the carved marble boxes that are their graves. And beneath his feet is a black receding pit with Satan bound hand and foot in chains and cast into his own darkness. Now that's a picture of victory. Jesus reaches into the ruts of our lives and invites us to grasp his outstretched hands and he declares to you and me, Behold, I am making all things new. And this is not just true in the eternal, in the life after death, in the new creation, but it is true here and now, in this very day. Philip Brooks, who you will all know as the one who penned O Little Town of Bethlehem, wrote of the great Easter message, the great Easter truth, is not that we are to live newly after death, that's not the great thing, but that we are to be new here and now by the power of the resurrection. Not so much that we are to live forever, as, as we are to, but that we may live nobly now, because we are to live forever. When Jesus rose from the dead, he not only broke the chains of sin and death, he also opened our eyes and he enables us to see things in new and vivid ways. Easter is not just an event. One Sunday of the year to worship. Easter is a new way of living and a new way of seeing. And over the next five weeks, I invite you back into worship. As in all of our services, we're going to, to, to see the new vivid way that Christ invites us to see our new selves and the, the power of forgiveness and reconciliation and the freedom of generosity and the redeeming of any suffering and the value of our time. So this Easter, let's begin living the new life of hope and love and faith. Let's believe. And let's tell this world the wonderful news. You don't have to stay in your rut. The grave is defeated. Christ is risen. All things have been made new. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our holy heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us give thanks. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, 
But now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You alone are God. You created form from the void, light from darkness, and life from the dust of the earth. Even when we turned away from your goodness, your mercy was not turned aside. You brought us out of slavery, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and set before us the way of life. You love the world so much. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, so that the world might be saved through Him. Your Spirit anointed Him to bring good news to the poor, release to the captive, sight to the blind, and freedom to the oppressed. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and won for you a new people by water and the Spirit. By the baptism of His death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant. Therefore, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Truly holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and the world for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send the power of your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. When we break the bread... Is it not a means of sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a means of sharing in the blood of Christ? Join in singing, Thine be the glory.
receive this blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sustaining fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen.